longer are we going to be without food? Well, if we hadn't made such a fuss about having waitress service, we could have queued up, got it and eaten it by now. When you're on your feet all day, the least you can expect <clears throat> is to sit down and rest at lunchtime and have your food served to you like civilised people. My stomach is bubbling like an atomic power station. Well, from where I'm sitting, there's a lot of fallout. <laughs> <laughs> We've only got half an hour left to have our dinner. Lunch. What's the difference? What do you have in the evening? Supper. <laughs> only the working class have, have dinner and supper. Professional people like ourselves have lunch and dinner. Now, look, I'm not working class. I live in a detached house. <laughs> Captain Peacock, I live in a flat, but that doesn't go to say that I don't lead a very refined life. And in my little nest, we have supper. Well, Captain Peacock wears a dinner jacket, you know. Lady Peacock sails down the stairs in her tiara. Fancy a sherry before we have the baked beans on toast, he said. <laughs> no, I think I'll wait and have mine with the cocoa. Don't be facetious, Mr. Lucas. Right, I've had a word with that canteen manageress. I put on my best smile. I said, is there any chance of my spaghetti arriving during the reign of the current monarch? <laughs> oh, we're right here, fool. I hope she didn't use bad language. She didn't use any language at all. She just gave me a right here, fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's intolerable. It's only half an hour before we have to go back. Do you know, the whole country's falling apart. When I was a boy, you looked at an atlas. There was red everywhere. That was the British Empire. Well, it's still red everywhere. Only now it means we owe money there. <laughs> I mean, look at these. Plastic. When I first came here, we had tablecloths and real EPNS. I mean, look at that. Oh, yeah. That's modern science for you. <laughs> These scientists are making terrible mistakes. I read somewhere where they've developed a very large clover for animals to eat. Now they find out that they're so big the bees can't pollinate them because their noses aren't long enough. <laughs> what are they going to do? They're going to breed bees with longer noses. <laughs> I didn't know they did it with their noses. You want to watch Richard Attenborough? <laughs> Does he do it with his nose? <laughs> No, he's the one that runs about in shorts, telling you how the world began. Apparently it all started as thick soup, with little orgasms crawling round. <laughs> Organisms. <laughs> oh well, little creepy things crawling in it. In that case, when I was in the kitchen just now, it's all starting all over again. <laughs> You know, it's amazing to think that out of all that soup came all the flowers and plants and animals, and after millions of years, a sort of man developed. Yeah, and all of them are different types. Yes, indeed. Some of them live in detached houses and some of them in semi-detached. <laughs> well, as a superior detached individual, would you like to go and have a word about our grub? Well, that might be necessary. There's a far simpler way to get in touch with those whose evolution is uh, not advanced enough to enable them to communicate on, a, on an intellectual level. What's that, Captain Peacock? One we used to use in the army. Why are we waiting? Why? Never on your life, darling. I was just expressing a, a concerted opinion. Does one of you wish to complain, then? We all do. Right. What's it all about? Let's have it. We have been sat sitting here for half an hour and nothing's arrived. Except you. Right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out there in the kitchen and I'm going to tell everyone to make yours a special order. Oh, thank you. Last. <laughs> one more word, you won't get anything at all. In that case, we shall complain to higher authority. I couldn't give a monkey's who you complain to. As far as I'm concerned, you can come down here and run it yourself. If you don't mind my saying so, they couldn't make a bigger cock up of it. It's all very well for you sitting out here like a wrinkled old prune. I'm too short in there and I've got a poison finger. 
cancel my toad in the hole. <laughs> I take great exception to you calling a senior salesman like Mr. Goldberg a wrinkled prune. Your whole manner is offensive, your appearance is unhygienic, and your emotional outbursts suggest that your mental balance is disturbed. You should see a doctor. You're the one that should see the doctor. I have no reason to see a doctor. In that case, I'll give you one. No! <laughs> <laughs> If I'd had my dinner there, I'd have thrown it in her face. Lunch. <laughs> he was so angry, he forgot he was detached. Uh, let me see that I've got this right. Uh, Mrs. Slocum was sat sitting, uh, the canteen manageress came in, and Mr. Goldberg complained because she'd served him poisoned prunes. Not quite right, sir. We all complained because we hadn't been served at all. But where did the prunes come in? They didn't. You haven't been listening. That woman was very obstropolous with Mr. Goldberg and Captain Peacock. She said he had a face like a wrinkled prune. Captain Peacock had a face like a wrinkled prune? No, Mr. Goldberg had a face like a prune. Yes, I suppose he has, but uh, <laughs> I'll make a note of that. No, no. Mr. Goldberg didn't like it at all. In fact, he was very upset. Then why did he order them? Order what? Prunes! <laughs> he didn't order them. Well, in that case, he can hardly complain if they didn't arrive. Excuse me, I don't want to get involved in this, but um, <laughs> wouldn't it be better if you crossed all that out and got on to the next bit? Well, that's up to you. I see you have a complaint about the spaghetti. Now, did the spaghetti arrive badly cooked? I really couldn't tell you. All I know was it burnt my ear. <laughs> I've heard of testing the baby's bath water with the elbow, but that does seem a very strange way of testing spaghetti. I wasn't testing it. I was just complaining because it was so long. Uh, long spaghetti. <laughs> I should have thought you could have cut it. No, no, that really is a very trivial complaint. I certainly can't take that up in your behalf. Perhaps we might get somewhere if Captain Peacock told Mr Rumble about his toe. Hmm, that should cook a goose. You will regret saying that. <laughs> What's all this about a toe? Ah, well, that happened just after I'd cancelled my toad in the hole. This woman and Captain Peacock had a heated exchange and she stamped on it. And we was all witnesses. Ah, now, of that I have got very clearly. And you certainly have cause for complaint. Canteen manageress had no right whatever to stamp on Mr Humphrey's toad in the hole. <laughs> uh, yes, that just leaves one thing further to clear up. <laughs> what is that, Mr Rumble? Oh, the cooked goose. Told you. <laughs> Enter. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Rumbold, I don't normally interrupt a meeting like this, but there is an emergency. There's a deputation to see you from the canteen kitchens. Well, tell them to make an appointment. Yes, Mr. Rumbold just can't see anybody nilly-willy. Oh. <laughs> no, I shouldn't tell them to go away if I was you. They're in a very, very agitated mood. Uh, and the eye tie chef's livid. Somebody criticised his toad in the hole and he's waving his chopping about. <laughs> oh, well, show them in, Harmon. Yeah. Kindly step mm. this way, brothers. <coughs> That's uh, maple, vegetables, fleur, uh, fish, uh, young Henry, trainee dog's body, Signor Baroli, Master Chef, and Mrs. Yardwick, Manager Hess. Thank you, Ron. Well, right, very good, sir. Right, let's have it out. I'm fed up with this lot. I've had it up to here with them. The chef must be drowning in it. <laughs> Quiet, Lucas. That's typical of him. All lip and let's have a look at your knockers. <laughs> <laughs> that snooty one's all mouth and trousers. And as for her, she's just dead common. Oh, how dare you! Go on, tell her you live in a detached house. You <laughs> shut your cake hole, you. <laughs> you are common. Not as common as what you are. My mother always said, common is as common does. And what's that supposed to mean? I don't know, but she always says it when my dad blows his nose on the tablecloth. <laughs> Look, I don't think we should argy-bargy among ourselves in front of these cooks and bottle washers. You're a pompous old snob. And as for her, she looks as though she's got a permanent smell under her nose. <laughs> and the nearer you are, the stronger it gets. <laughs> Brother, did you hear that? Temper's afraid and feelings are running high. I think we should all calm down. Ah, shut up, Jackies. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you speak to senior management like that? I don't have to speak to you at all. I should go to Mr Grace and get a personal written apology. Andy Armo. Eh. Three souls. <laughs> well, how about that? Yeah, that's a 
sort of attitude we have to put up with all the time. I'm glad it's all come out. Well, as my mother used to say, better out than in. My mother used to say that, but I didn't like to mention it. <laughs> well, I, I hope you got a verbatim report of everything she said. Uh, no, no, but I shall make a note of it now. She called you Juggiers. <laughs> yes, I remember that. <laughs> and she said Captain Peacock was snooty and all mouth and trousers. Mr. Lucas, let it be recorded, was, in her opinion, all lip and let's have a look at your knockers. <laughs> Is that spelled with a K? I don't know. I've never seen them written down. <laughs> Here, she said I was dead common. Uh, yes, well, we won't make too much of that. <laughs> and she said I walked about with a smell under my nose. I can't imagine where she got that idea from. Now, what did she say about you, Mr. Humphreys? Nothing. I came out of it completely unscathed. Which is unusual for you, isn't it, Mr. Humphrey? It is, Mr. Lucas. I mean, you usually have a skate somewhere along the line, don't you, Mr. Humphrey? I'm a martyr to them, Mr. Lucas. Speaking for myself, and I am unanimous in this, I think they ought to get rid of the lot of them and get some decent stuff in. Yeah, we could run that canteen better than what they does. Do, Miss Brobs? Yeah, well, we could run the canteen better than what they does do. <laughs> Don't sound right, do it? It certainly don't, Miss Rumbold. <laughs> Rumbold here. Oh, hello, Rumbold. And that nice manageress from the canteen has been to see me. Uh, apparently, there have been a lot of complaints about your lot. Uh, she, he wants a written apology. Yes, well, I intend to take a very firm stand on this, sir. She was very aggressive indeed, and my department feel that the whole canteen staff is incompetent. In fact, they feel they could do a damn sight better job themselves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Well, in that case, they can start tomorrow morning. The canteen staff's thrown in their overalls and walked out. Well, what shall I do, sir? Well, you'd better sort it out, Juggiers. <laughs> of course, Miss Brahms, if you hadn't opened your mouth, we'd all be on our way home by now. Well, we said we could do it. So it's up to us to acquaint ourselves with the kitchen and make a plan of battle before we serve lunch tomorrow. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Just look at it. There's muck everywhere. If my mother saw this, she'd have a fit. <laughs> oh! To think we've been eating the food, what they've been cooking in here. It's like the Mari Celeste. <laughs> <laughs> they've even left something on the stove. Oh, that's my toad in the hole. <laughs> well, let's not be daunted by the prospect. As the chief instructor on my Royal Army Service Corps catering course used to say, cooking requires very little intelligence, otherwise women wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if that's the way it's going to be, I'm going. Come on, Miss Brahms. Present company accepted, of course. <laughs> We've all heard about your culinary expertise, and naturally I shall expect you to be my chief assistant. Oh, you've elected yourself boss, then. <laughs> Somebody has to get things organised, Mrs. Slocum. Now then, uh, which of us can claim some cooking experience? Uh, Lucas. Well, I boil a nifty tin of baked beans. I see. Lucas... Preparation, serving, and washing up. Uh, Miss Browns. Oh, she's had a lot of experience in the kitchen, and very little of it to do with cooking. <laughs> Let us be serious, Mr. Lucas. Well, actually, my mum does most of it. Well, what happens when you're on your own? Oh, well, I get a bit of garlic sausage, and I fry it up with some onions and bubble and squeak. No wonder you're on your own. <laughs> I can do um, a suki masaki. What's that? Oh, it's sort of eggy meaty thing on a stick. Where did you learn to do that? Well, I had a discreet boyfriend and he fancied a local dish. I said she had a lot of experience in the kitchen. <laughs> You've got a one track mind, you have a dirt track. I once made some toffee. <laughs> we had to throw away the tin. It cost 37 pounds. It must have been a very expensive tin. Yeah, my teeth were in it. <laughs> you know, I've helped my mother in the kitchen ever since I was tall enough to see over the edge of the table. <laughs> when she was making bread, she used to give me bits of dough to play with, you know, and I used to make bread men and put currants in for eyes and buttons. <laughs> One day I put a bit of candied peel where I shouldn't have done and I couldn't go in the kitchen for a fortnight. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, we don't often have bread men on the menu. 
Is there anything else you can do? Well, let me try and give you one of my typical menus. Um, oysters Rockefeller, quails in aspic, deviled lobster with mange too, followed by baked Alaska and marron glacé. Of course, if we've got visitors coming, I do something special. <laughs> this is a canteen, Mr. Humphreys, not a trade union dinner. Now, uh, what about you, Mrs. Logan? Well, I just do simple cooking to my own taste, but you'll never see a dirty plate in my kitchen. And if there are any leftovers, my pussy gobbles them up in a flight. <laughs> well, I vote that Mrs. Slocum is the chef. Yeah. 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 Right, let us agree then that Mrs. Slocum is head cook, but we'd all have to pull together to get the meal prepared and served. Right, before we muck in, we better muck out. <laughs> Come on, let's get this washing up done. I'll wash, you wipe. Can I have that other rubber glove? What do you mean? Well, I've got to put my hands in water. I don't want wash day red hands. Well, what about me? I've got to handle the wet plates. But... <coughs> Captain Peacock, could we have a ruling on this, please? Uh, yes, well, uh, Mr Humphreys will uh, dip with his right hand, on which will be the right glove. He will use the dish mop with his left hand, which will not go in the water. He will then pass the plate to Mrs. Slocum, who will receive it with her left gloved hand. She will wipe it with the tea cloth in her right hand and pass it to Mr. Goldberg, who will stack it with both hands. Where would we be without you, Captain Peacock? Well, now, uh, while we're working, uh, can you discuss possible menus? Uh, who's got an idea for starter? Well, why don't we have grapefruit like we usually do? Yeah, and if we open the tins now and leave them lying around all night, we can have flies on them like we usually do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that since we've complained, we ought to do something quite different. Yes, how about soup? Oh, my mother makes marvellous soup. She uses all the leftovers, she empties the fridge into a big pot, then puts it in the oven on regular three. The morning after, she drains it and sieves it and strains it and whatnot, you see. Do you know, the other day she found a death aid in it. <laughs> did it still work? No, <laughs> but the soup did. Oh. I don't think soup is very inventive. Well, why don't we take all the bits and pieces we would have put in the soup, put it in the mincer and call it pâté? Why didn't you suggest that a bit earlier? I mean, all the bits and pieces have gone in the pig bin. Not all of them. That lot's just gone on the floor. <laughs> Do be careful, Miss Browns. I'm not insured for tripping over gristle. Mr. Humphreys, lend us your glove. I'm not touching this with me bare hands. Stop the production line. I'll do it myself. Silly Mrs. Slocum, only women are frightened of mice. Well, what was it? A frog. What? What's the frog doing down there? Perhaps some fairy prince was rude to a gypsy violinist. How do I know? Oh, listen, look. Get out of the way. I'll get rid of it. Don't! Don't! That's cruel. That's a living, thinking thing. Possibly of royal blood. <laughs> Somebody put it in here and get rid of it. No, 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 no. No need to use that. I'm used to handling frogs. I was always rescuing them from the goldfish pond. Hey, wait. Hey. Shh. Hello. Hey. Hello. Don't be frightened. Oh, me, they're having a chat. He must have said the wrong thing. It's just jumped through that hole in the skirting board. Here, bung it up with this dishcloth, then he can't get out again. Don't do that. It'll starve to death. Well, we can unbung it before we go home. What I want to know is, how did he get up here in the first place? Uh, it probably came up with the watercress as a tadpole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, as we haven't had much success with the first course, can, can we attempt to decide on the main dishes? Captain Peacock, are you sure you're not overtaxing yourself, licking your pencil? Let's get on with your work, Mr Lucas. They used to make a very good steak pie. Maybe the recipe's still here somewhere. Oh, it's no good producing the, the same dishes that we've been complaining about. We've got to come up with something quite different. Something, uh, well, French, for instance. Well, if you'd let me have my way with that broom, we could have had frog's legs, couldn't we? <laughs> it's all very well talking about what we're going to give them. We don't even know what's in the larder yet. Well, that point had just crossed my mind, Mrs Slocum. Yeah, just after Mrs Slocum said it. <laughs> right, there's 
one whole pig, one whole sheep, and one hole in the wall with a frog looking through it. <laughs> You can either have meringue glacé or crepe Suzette. I'll have both. Uh, do you know, that's the best curry I've had since I was at Wolverhampton. And that shish kebab was just like you get in a Greek restaurant. Can I have the recipe? Well, uh, it's just a question of knowing how to do it. Coffee to follow, Mr Harmon. If I may, Mrs Logan. It's the best food we've ever had at Grace Brothers. I agree. Well done. The best curry I've had since I was in Wolverhampton. <laughs> <laughs> Table four, keep the change. Thank you. Three shishes and two tandoori! <laughs> You'll have to wait for your shishes, there's been a rush on them. Captain Peacock, I'm down to my last shish. More shishes, Mr. Lucas. I'm shishing as fast as I can. <laughs> I'm running out of skewers. I'm not going to give you your tandoori until you've got your shishes, otherwise your tandoori will get tepid. Right. Well, can I have a meringue and a crepe on the same plate? Oh, I bet that's for them animals in panties. Mr. Grace has just taken his place in the executive dining room and you'd like the soup du jour. There's been a rush on that too. I shall have to see the manager. Captain Peacock, are you free? What's the matter, Mr. Humphreys? Will you squeeze me another mock turkle? I'm having a crisis with the shishes. It's for young Mr. Grace. One turtle soup coming up. Please drop everything else, Mrs. Slocum, and take the soup through to the executive dining room. Yes, Mr. Rumble. Oh, and uh, congratulations to you all. Everyone's most impressed. What's he having after the soup? I will both have the shish kebab. Ah, that's if Mr. Lucas found some more skewers. Otherwise, you'll have to have it in a lump. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, have you found any more meat skewers? I'm just converting your coat hanger. <laughs> oh, my sheepskin too. Don't worry, it's very much at home. It's hanging on the sheep in the larder. <laughs> By the time the doctor came, I was covered in bandages from head to toe with only one eye showing. Oh, dear. Whatever did the doctor say? He said, I don't like the look of that eye. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Now, here's your soup, it's Mr. Grace. Oh. Real turtle. Oh, well, good. I like something with a bit of body in it. <coughs> <laughs> I don't think it's very hot. I'll take it to the kitchen oh, and no, warm no, it up. No, 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 I don't like it too hot. It takes it out of me if I have to blow on it. <laughs> you can taste the turtle in it. <laughs> or something. Well, I'll leave you to it then. Mr. Grace, the bowl is very full. Don't drink all of it or you won't have room for what's to come. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> what did you say he was going to have after the soup? Either a stomach pump or an ambulance. <laughs> there's your crepe and your meringue. Mm, and there's your shishes. They've all shriveled. You were too long. Really enjoyed that. <coughs> right, Mr. Grace? Sorry about that, I got a frog in my throat. <laughs> well, I'm still glowing from the compliments. They said it was the best lunch they've ever had. Well, we said we could do better than the others, and we did. How much did we take? Um. Ninety-eight pounds. Ah, and what were the outgoings? Uh, Chinese takeaway, fifteen quid. 
<laughs> Indian takeaway, £32.50. Greek takeaway, £59.25. Which makes a net loss of uh, £8.45. P. Thank you, Mr. Goldberg. £8.45? <laughs> if we keep that up every day, we'll be broke in a week. Well, we could raise the prices. Well, that wouldn't do much to help my feet. No. Or my wash day red hand. Well, the regular staff won't come back unless they get a written apology. Well, in times of crisis, the British have always stood firm by their ideals. On the other hand, we as a nation couldn't have got where we are today without knowing how to compromise. I quite agree. Gather round, everybody. Now then, uh, how does this sound? We, the undersigned... Oh, very good. ...humbly <laughs> apologise to the canteen staff of Grace Brothers for complaining about the food, the service, the hygiene... And that cow of a manager, eh? <laughs>